So let's have a big uh, round of applause and welcome to our special guest this morning, uh, Sako Sensei. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you, Stephen, for this introduction. Uh, before starting, I just want to make sure that uh, I come from West Africa, not South Africa. <laughs> but I want to make sure that I love also my English friends and my British uh, people. Thank you very much. <laughs> and yeah, when they, um, Catherine and Stephen uh, brought me to talk here um, about my story, so I was a little bit confused because for me, like, uh, this is a gathering of English teachers and then also um, I don't know really what to share. Uh, but like uh, they say, no, I mean, just talk about your story. So that's what I, I'm going to do. So I'm sorry, like, um, maybe I, go, I will go through a lot of different uh, stages of my life, but I want to share uh, from the beginning uh, what I was uh, trying to do or to be in Japan, and also as one of the pioneers of opening Japanese university to foreigners, maybe there's something to say. So um, I just like, I mean, I try to put down so what I really can share with um, the audience. So, um, you know, the second last point behind, so I say, finally, life as a multi-identity, multicultural, multi-personality, I don't know what, I'm so confused about my identity actually. So that's like very important, so <laughs> to me also. And so, and also, I think um, as, uh, for an intellectual, maybe we have some role to play in Japanese uh, institutions, so which is also very important. And then also, uh, that's maybe something I can share with uh, you guys today. So, who am I? You know, like um, um, I always show this picture when I um, make a talk recently. So this is me when I was, I don't know, eight or something. But this picture is very interesting. Uh, actually, uh, I have an uncle who came from the village to my house in Bamako and <laughs> keeping this picture. You know, this is you. And I raise you, and then you have something to give me back. You know, that's always in Africa. You, have, you, are, you keep paying them, I don't know, for all your life. <laughs> but um, uh, he wanted to say, um, okay, so I just want to uh, show how um, much you grow. So I was appointed um, president of Kiseka, uh, Kyoto Sega University in uh, April 2018 um, through election. And after that, for me, when I was uh, uh, running for the presidency, I, I really didn't uh, realize that that can be something very special. And after that, I don't know, I found myself in New York Times, in whatever, in French uh, magazines, and then even like some people name uh, the 100 most influential Africa, uh, Africans in 2018. I don't know <laughs> what kind of influence I did, but uh, you know, like um, maybe there are something um, special in that. I didn't know myself. So that's why, like, I mean, if people say, okay, please share your story, I try also to convince myself to understand, to analyze also, to have a feedback uh, on what I did until now. So, uh, has he introduced me, so this is my profile very quickly. So, um, I am architect, and then uh, I was trained in China and in Japan, and I did also um, some training uh, outside of these two countries. So, um, I started to work uh, for Kyoto Sega University from 2001, so 18 or 19 years from now. So, this is briefly uh, what I did. And as a researcher, um, I'm specializing in housing and whatever is about communities. So um, before uh, that point, so I belong to a uh, few uh, committees and then also I'm learning through um, a lot of opportunities too. Um, I think, and I want that because this is a good opportunity to introduce my country, which is in West Africa. <laughs> so this is briefly Mali. So we speak French in Mali. Uh, French is our official language. And then um, 
I don't know uh, what, what is the size. This is three times the size of Japan. And then uh, we have a, a population growing very fast. And then uh, we were a French colony, and we got independent in 1960. And then, so we are very diverse. So this is like a, the number of ethnic groups and languages you find in Mali. So from the north, we have Berber people. To the south, you have also uh, some Mandinka people. And one great thing uh, about Mali is the music. Uh, so in Mali, you can find like a, a lot of kind of music from the Mali Empire. I want to share, because this is a Sunday morning, some of the song with you. And then this is uh, Mali, so it's a, a savanna uh, country, so with, uh, without any big forest. And then we have the desert, so as you can see the temperature. So when I visit there, it was like 56 yeah, degrees Celsius in daytime. And daytime you can, uh, at night you can get 5 to 10. So you see that the difference is very big. But anyway, the people are surviving. So and then we have this uh, uh, Niger River which is also a great river. And Mali has also um, some world heritages. So today, um, I will not talk about that, but I just want to share you some of the pictures. Uh, for example, we have Jene, uh, which is also a historical town. And then also, um, this uh, has the biggest uh, mud bricks mo mosque uh, in the world, so which is also something very amazing. We have the Dogon people. Um, they thought the spiritual thinking are very amazing too. And then finally, we have where you people don't want to reach, Tombuk 2. But it exists in Mali, so anyway. <laughs> so we have Tombuk 2 in Mali. <laughs> so please, <laughs> just understand that Tombuk 2 exists. <laughs> and then so we have Bamako. <laughs> this is the capital city where I was um, born. And also, um, our education background is very interesting. So this is the French-speaking countries. So uh, we are not using exactly um, the same curriculum as France, but almost similar curriculum. Like, I mean, the structure is almost the same. So that's what I am calling that the dual education system. So what is amazing in that, so daytime when we go to school, we are allowed to speak only French at school. And, you know, we think like also French, you know, as you understand. And when you go back home, you have to forget all about that French style. Mm -hmm. You have to begin your ethnic group people, your local community people. And then so in one day, you know, we have to have multi-personalities. So at school, you say, yeah, you know, you and then when you go home, you know, you have to be very cool. <laughs> and then so, I mean, as kids, I, I didn't even know that this had an impact on us. But, uh, you know, like after uh, you learn, really like, you know, how to adapt yourself in different situations. So, for example, like in Mali, um, in our local communities, we have like a, uh, the chance to speak few languages. So, uh, but um, my, uh, the language I speak, I, have, I speak two or three of them, but so we don't go through readings. So it's oral. And then, so that's a different type of, you know, learning so we have. And then when we go to school, so we have, whatever is readings. So, like we're changing, um, you know, our style a day, so, which is very interesting. So, and then we go to Korean school. So, some of us also learn about like Islam, about, you know, like uh, Arabic and all those things. So we have like, a, as I say, my personal, uh, multi-personal identity, whatever. So, this is like how we change all the day. And then if you see also the school size, which is very interesting, we have uh, many types of school. So this is like a size of elementary school. So what we do in Mali is not, um, you know, to support everyone, 
So um, education is free, but you have to pass your exams every year. So if not, you repeat two times after death or you're out of school. So we have a lot of people like uh, who abandon or who you know stop uh, school at a very early age, and then all, they only support the remaining people. So of course we even don't know why why we are competing for. So that's also something which is very important. So we are, I mean, receiving education, we really not, don't know the real meaning because it's a kind of like a European oriented education. And then, so um, this is my high school. And after high school, uh, I got the government uh, scholarship to go uh, for China. And then, so um, I went to China in 1985. So if you can imagine China in the 80s, so that's like uh, the beginning uh, of the open market and all those things. So we were like a kind of like a experimental uh, bodies uh, for like, I mean, opening Chinese mind. But at the same time, they were dividing our life, uh, you know, from Chinese people. You know, like, I mean, it was so confused. So we were not allowed to go to the same restaurant. So we don't use the same hotels. And then we don't even use the same dormitory. Even this, we don't use the same cafeteria on campus. So that was the life. But at the same time, Chinese people, they want to be friends with us. When they visit us and then they leave, they will ask them a lot of questions. We have police in our buildings everywhere. So, I mean, but we enjoy it. Anyway, so, and this is uh, what we went through. So we have to learn Chinese for one year. And after one year, we start school with uh, Chinese students. So this is my architecture school in China. And it was really great, but um, Chinese people, what really like, I mean, amazed me, um, amazed me, they're like, it, they're very curious. So while I'm working on the streets, a Chinese just person come and touch me. Oh, it's a true color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was great, anyway. And then I was, um, what, what made the difference between China and Japan? I was able to fight. I was able to get angry. I was able also to shout. That's what you, something you can do in Japan here. <laughs> you have to share that. And then also, so uh, in China, so I mean, we had a lot of like, I mean, uh, interaction with uh, Chinese people. So, you know, architecture students, we always do like the sketching, all those things uh, on street. And then while I'm doing my sketches, so I receive also a lot of tourists, like they just gave up their tour and then they come to me to check. Hmm. This, this, this line is not true, he's not, I mean, they comment everything, and then if you say, what are you doing, and then they say, can we be friends? <laughs> you know, like, this is something which was really big. But we experienced other things in China. If you go through internet, you will check this, um, Nanking um, anti-African protest. So that was us, and then I was also one of the leaders of African groups there. So Chinese student, I don't know, like, I mean, that's, I mean, if you can see the dates, it's just a little bit before Tiananmen. So they just like, I mean, um, say, okay, one day they want to kill all the foreigners um, or, or Africans. But, but that was like something very big. But uh, we learn a lot of things even through this. I mean, you know, about like, I mean, Chinese, um, I mean, uh, mindset and also so how the education also is, I mean, uh, setting. So that's something uh, we learned about China. And after that, I came to Japan. And of course, I started to like Japan because the architecture and all those things, I was fascinated by that. And um, I started to learn Japanese, and also I was teaching um, at NOVA, maybe some of you know very well, <laughs> in a part-time base. I found like a lot of like a difficulties in interacting with Japanese people. They were like so serious. I mean, um, I don't know if serious, but you ask them to make some examples. They really like, I mean, talk about their life to you. I mean, which you don't want to listen in the morning. Yeah, my, my husband, da da da, why, you know, like, I mean, that's always happen. No, just say, you know, today I went to the market, I did this, but like, they don't. They really like, today, do you have time? They just take the books. So that, that shocked me because like, um, uh, that was the problem I had in my Japanese language school because everything I told them, they have meeting on that say, this student is not serious because they were asking me, what do you do Saturday? I said, oh, I'm clubbing all Saturday night. And then they, take it, they, they took that very seriously and then they make even a meeting. This guy, maybe he can't go to university because like, he's playing too much. But you know, like I said, no, I mean, I'm, I'm making examples. But so, um, the interaction with Japanese uh, people like in that level was very interesting. 
And um, I start my school. Maybe this is something um, you guys experience. You all have to do the same thing. You have to share the beer of other people. Uh, what do you say? What can they say? So you divide the money uh, integrally. I don't drink actually. And then, you know, uh, Japanese people, they were drinking, and then I have to pay their money. <laughs> and then, I, I don't know. Like, you have to follow all the rules, you know. You don't have to uh, say, I don't want to do this. And, and then, and anyway, you have to really, like, follow the rule of your laboratory, of your lab mates, and all those things. So I had a lot of cultural shock. I had a lot of problem, but I can't do, like, in China. So no fights. You have to admit. But um, I was uh, appointed Friendship Ambassador of Kyoto Prefecture, so that also allowed me to understand a lot of things about Kyoto and learning a lot of things. But I had a lot of integration problem with uh, my neighborhood. So this is a very interesting example. So um, I was living in a house uh, where the guy, uh, my landlord, he was like a, uh, someone who was designing a kimono. Uh, picture. So he had an atelier in the second floor and I borrowed the first one. And then he asked me, oh, you know, you always do party, but your place is small. So please come to my place and do your party. And I take it, you know, I mean, a serious work. And I start to party in, her, in his house every weekend. <laughs> so every weekend I was bringing my friends. And then he was saying, okay. But so one day, so we were 30, and he started to say, okay. It's difficult to recognize 30 people. Oh, okay. I say maybe he has some reconnection problem. So I took a picture of each friend, put him in the paper, and wrote the name of everyone, and give it to him. That's my party. And then, of course, he said, oh, that's okay. But after, when I understood a little bit Japanese, that was meaning it's enough. And then that's the problem I had with my neighborhood. Every time I was doing party, the next morning, they arranged to meet me. You know, we love you. You know, you are always happy with your friends. I said, yeah, please, next time, please join me. <laughs> and then one day, I found the police on my door. <laughs> that's my neighbors are, are complaining. So that's the problem maybe um, we all encounter here. So after um, 95, uh, the Hanshin earthquake, so I, as I was a student, but I tried to create a kind of like an NPO, a non-profit organization to help like uh, my fellow foreigners and together. Because for me, like uh, Japanese people were doing a lot of things, but not enough, but they don't also try to consult us to do things. So I tried to uh, create an entity uh, which can also uh, include Japanese, which can be more inclusive uh, for foreign Japanese. So we did a lot of things. So we opened uh, schools, things, and then so it was really very interesting. So we did that for uh, many years. And I was also doing, uh, I, I'm, I'm always doing party, I'm sorry, I'm a party people. <laughs> so a uh, festival uh, once a year uh, on Kamogawa River. So that also uh, helped us to integrate and to know a lot of Japanese also uh, structures. So this was the whole festival. So it's about like uh, 10,000 people every year. So doing a lot of things and which was also um, a good opportunity for us to interact with Japanese people and learn uh, things we are from Japanese people. And then we had about 650 um, Japanese and foreign volunteers, so which was really great. So my um, meaning was uh, trying very hard to integrate Japanese society, but not being assimilated. So that was the, the difficult point. Because for Japanese people, like the assimilation is, the cultural assimilation for them is a, the point you have to reach. But for me, no. I, I want to remain Malian. I want to remain that I can be late 10 minutes. No, 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 no. not really, but you know. But like, you know, I mean, I don't want to stress myself like, okay, I want to do everything integrally like Japanese people. So that was a little bit like my confrontation all the time with Japanese people. So I try, and then I try to explain to them what integration means. So we have to have a kind of mutually uh, understanding, which will agree, like, I mean, we have to understand each other. It's not like a unilateral that we foreigner we have to adapt to Japanese style. You have to adapt everything, you know, uh, according to, Jap to Japan. So that was um, my meaning um, by the integration. But also, I uh, was a little bit lucky because um, maybe um, according to uh, this Edward Hall uh, 
explanation. Japan is a very high context and very anal uh, you know, analog uh, society. And then, if you see the sub Saharan African countries also, we have the same also orientation somehow. But our problem is we receive two uh, education, the European, the Western one, and the African one. So we can be flexible to understand both. But the problem of Japanese people, they can that in the extreme. So that was also the lack I had in Japan. So uh, life as a researcher too, um, I was uh, engaged in a lot of uh, research committees and then housing. And also, we Japanese people, I don't know, like uh, this is very interesting. So they were always uh, trying to avoid discussions or those things. And also like, you know, you have to follow what, you know, your love or I don't know, whatever uh, uh, Kamisama or what is the God did to your love. But, I mean, I want sometimes, you know, like to say, okay, we, can we have different approaches to things? Can we define architecture in different ways? Okay, they say, no, no it's difficult. I say, okay, how can you explain that the two pictures, which is Santa Fe, are like a little bit like a Mali a Jenny? So how do you explain that? So how do you explain the impacts or the, the regional like, context or everything? So they didn't want to understand, so um, we tried to do some uh, research in Africa. So we went to Mali, we tried to see if we can have another definition on architecture. So what was that? Uh, if you see in this picture, so uh, this is a house, a normal house is Mali, they have like a, a courtyard. The extreme one is this one, maybe if you can see, 72 people are living in this house. In architecture, impossible. That the architecture we learn, impossible. But why it's possible? So we have to understand that. Maybe that may give us another theory of architecture. So I tried to do a lot of observation uh, researches. So these people, they are creating spaces uh, a long day. They create one, they put it away, they create another one, but putting tools and they're moving them. And then they're also trying to, you know, like I mean, negotiate the space through all day. And which was very interesting. So if like you do the observation, you will see the activities moves, you know, time to time. And then this gives us like a, another theory, another way of understanding architecture, which is about space negotiation with people. So if you go through the day, you will see like people, they, sometimes they overlap, you can have a, an explanation on that, but there is like a kind of like meaning in space occupation, which is not the space people teach us. And then some of my lab mates uh, tried to apply that in Kyoto. So um, in Kyoto, so we had this, uh, if you can see, a little bit water they put like a, they say Uchimizu. So in afternoon, usually like a, they put water. So it doesn't have a lot of big meaning, but it has a meaning. So we try to check that. That's crazy. So my lab mates, so we measure all those things and see if you put water until uh, up to your neighbor's place, what means that? Mm -hmm. You have a good relation? Because in Kyoto, they don't say they have good relation anyway. And then so we try through uh, those kind of like, you know, uh, demonstration to see what is going on. And then this is, you know, if you go all the day, the overlap, it's not like the Malian uh, space we have. Okay. And what is interesting in that, we try to um, have also a talk. So that uh, my senpai, so he did like a kind of a lot of interview to check how do they define their neighbor. So they say like a um, asokowa, so there, or these people, or them, like I mean, how, so what kind of word they use for neighbor? And if you uh, check that with the, this Uchimizu line, it can say how much they are close and how much they are far, but they will never show you that. So it means like we can study architecture in, in different contexts, and then I start to call my, uh, or they start to call it, I don't know if it's me or them, anthropological architecture. I even don't understand, but I mean, that's how they call now my research. So, but I just try to understand space through uh, people activities and movement. So as a teacher, um, when I uh, came to Seika, uh, so I was teaching different subjects, uh, but they put me in different also uh, committees. And one of the first shock, as I told you, I came to Seika in 2001, uh, April, and in June, they say, okay, you are in charge of the US program, whatever. And, okay, that was my first time to see the student also going to US. So we went there uh, late August, and we had the 9-11. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, that was my first uh, shock as a teacher, because the school called us and said, okay, you have to take the student back immediately. But they were supposed to stay there six months. The students say no, and then the school say yes. And then we are between these people, you know, like I mean, going through a lot of emotional uh, things. But what was also interesting is like, I mean, so, I mean, is it, the problem is people don't try really to understand, to analyze what, what is the situation. It's like this, and then the decision is this, so no negotiation. And then I, I, I told them, why we don't negotiate with um, this student? They've been, you know, like uh, looking for this occasion. They are now in, in the U.S., so we have to talk to them. So that was also like the experiences I had um, when I started to work in SECA. And also the fact that students are more close to you sometimes, like the bother them. Or why the school, uh, the student, the student, they feel free. They're more close to foreign teachers, actually. They call you by your name, Usubi, or whatever, or Sako. They even don't put sensei. So, so those things sometimes, you know, frustrate our, like, colleagues. Why maybe he's giving special occasion to students? And then sometimes they even check your credit system. Maybe you're giving credit to them like this. And then, so, I was so shocked by, like, this, I mean, I want to say, situation that we don't trust each other at the same level. We are teachers, like Japanese teachers, but, like, they try always, you know, to check what you're doing. I don't know why, but, like, that was the same. So, when um, I start to be a dean of faculty, so I was confronting to different situations. The decision-making process, who exactly can make decisions? Japan. Who? Who is responsible? Because they always keep asking who takes responsibility of this decision. So it's not in the text, we can't do it. Even if it's good. So, and then, I mean, it comes to a certain level, like, okay, sometimes they refer to Mongusho, they say, okay, no, the country refused. They always want to find someone uh, who is not within us, who is dictating something we don't see, to not make the decision. So I tried to change all those things. So I, um, as the president, I start to create new institutions which can make decisions quickly. I will show you later. So, and then that was also one thing. Another thing is also um, the interpretation also. Like they, you know, they have a lot of readings of facts. That's also something like, I mean, because this is also interesting. I mean, if I'm criticizing Japanese language, sometimes I'm telling them Japanese language is not a scientific language because um, you have hundred, you know, uh, way of interpreting, I mean, to interpret like something which is so easy to understand. So sometimes like I try also to change that kind of thing. So, and then I, as I say here, invisible re uh, rules. Reading in the air, reading the air, whatever. They say kukyo. This is the most difficult thing because in Japan you have to, you know, like um, do things according, I don't know, to feeling, to whatever. Like they say, I mean, you have to understand what the air <laughs> invisible. So that that kind of like um, uh, what I can say, the influence of Japanese nonverbal communication in decision making, like um, that, that, that's really like um, a big problem. I mean, for a lot of foreigners because. We want to make things clear, but like they want to put a little bit abstract. And then, as I say, so you have to, I mean, create institutions. So when I became president, so we create this institution uh, which can make all the new decisions. Okay, maybe it's a little bit dictatorship. No, I come from West Africa, anyway. So, and then I put all the centers which make new things, new challenges, under, I am, I, I, and by the way, I am also the director of this institution, anyway, and also the head of human resources. <laughs> okay, so, and then uh, I make also a statement on diversity. So we have to work more on this diversity because like, uh, okay, I don't want to offend uh, my British or English friend, but South Africa win because they are very diverse, anyway. So, and I try to also make some goals on diversity. Foreign student, 40%. Foreign faculty member, 30%. Administration, 5 Women with higher position, 40 And then Japan is really interesting. 
So we didn't have any meetings for this. I just put that on the paper. And the next morning, they start meetings. The president decision. I said, okay, thank you. They make even structures to discuss about how to do it. But I never tell them, you know, you know like this is not a fix. Things like I just this is my dream actually, but they start to work on my dreams. You know they're very serious, and then now like I mean everywhere they they, they you know they start to do that. So what is very interesting, Japanese people they want change, but they are afraid about change. But if you give them opportunity to change, they really like do it. So that's like the good thing I learned from Japan. And then, as I say, Emmanuel Japanese, so. I have to check the time. Okay, I have six more minutes, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Um, actually, like uh, I got the Japanese citizenship uh, from 2002, uh, which also made my life a little bit difficult after Japan. So when I travel with my Japanese passport, which doesn't have any sign of Mali, uh, because in Japan they put your legal address, not where you're born. So it's only Kyoto, and especially when I go to France, they always stop me say, they check the passport first, and then they start to be confused. <laughs> Why are you Japanese? <laughs> your, your name is not Japanized well, because I have Usubi Sako in my passport. And sometimes they say, okay, maybe like, maybe if you do some sports, you can be Japanese. So they start to think about what sport I can do. They end up being small. I say, no, I'm not big enough for that. So, um, it's very interesting because this globalization, you know, like, is going through a lot of, like, examples. And then, um, what also is interesting, like, uh, amazed me too, for example, like, when I go to some countries, I go through this automatic gate. That was, that happened to me in Holland. I went to, through the automatic gate, and then they got, I got alarm. And then they said they have to check the authenticity of my passport. And then they, I mean, I was there with a passport in the national zone. <laughs> being nobody for a few hours, and then when they came back, the passport was okay, but my flight, you know, <laughs> was not there. So that's, you know, things, what happened now, and for me, it's very interesting, and then I'm trying, as I say, not to be assimilated, to keep my Malian side, and being Japanese also. So it's difficult for a lot of Japanese people, or for even my Malian people also, to understand that, but like, that's try, what I'm trying to do, to be this kind of like, I mean, uh, the symbol of the globalization too. So what uh, we foreigners, we can do in Japanese educa educational uh, institutions. So we have a big problem in Japan, that's the perception problem. So Japan, like, I mean, um, maybe it can change. So that's what I, I, I wrote here from package to individual consideration. They consider always us as a package, the, the Korean student the Chinese student. And what is very interesting, Korean student or Chinese student, now they are more diverse individually. So I was talking with a, a Chinese student, so, and then we were talking in Chinese about like a, her t hometown. Um, so she said, oh, okay, yeah, but like it's, it has been a long time, uh, you know, I don't really know my hometown. I said, oh, why? Oh, yeah, I was born in Hungary, Hungary and then I lived in, in Italy and I'm in Japan now. So you see, I mean, people are really like now, uh, you know, multi, uh, what do you say, uh, they have like a lot of view about things, but only Japan like try to frame us. And then that's also something we need really to change, um, to have this, to reach that diversity. So that's the role we should play as foreigners also. So, um, I think uh, how to do that, so how to overcome the cultural gap at every step? So they don't, they don't miss any steps. At every step, you have a cultural gap. I mean, even your way of drinking, they will say, no, you have to drink like this or that. So like, I mean, so you have to follow, you know, the way of thinking, you know, like, I mean, that's also very good, but now with a lot of like foreigners, it's different. So this kind of confrontation, so how we change that? So framing also of foreigners. So this is also in both sides because we also, as foreigners, sometimes we like to be framing. So, you know, I do something and if I don't understand, I say, yeah, because I'm foreigner. <laughs> so we have to overcome that too. It's, it's true. You have, we have to also make this effort to 
uh, towards Japanese. And then also that limitation also in communication, we have to overcome. We have to try to understand why they communicate like that. What is behind that? So that's also uh, some of my goals also I want to reach. Because I, for, for me, I found that you know, these cultural differences can be learned. If you're together as a human being, you can you know, like learn about like, I mean, how to create a kind of new understanding, even like a kind of new frame uh, of cultural like, understanding. So that's like uh, some of the goals. So I will go very quickly, maybe in two minutes, about SECA. So okay. this is my... Okay. It's okay? Okay. Uh, this is my university, so, um, which is based on the liberal arts, global in, and creation. So um, it's very easy going. And then this is uh, our philosophy, freedom and autonomy. So, um, but this freedom is also not well understanding. But anyway, <laughs> we're trying to do things. And I, change, I, I told them, like, we are not like educating, uh, you know, students for only uh, having a job. We have to give them place, you know, to build themselves, you know, to, to try to reach like a certain goal of like what they want to do. So also that's something also we are working on. And also this concept, to, so you don't have to hide, uh, you know, your identity or whatever you have. So why we don't like... Um, learn uh, from each other, and then that can also help us to grow to, to, together. So that's like something I'm also trying to see, this inclusion and integration. And I built up rules. So there are a lot of, but <laughs> just few of them. So I open all kind of exams to foreign students. That's something uh, very special, because until now we have uh, exams for only foreigners. And then, so we only compare foreigners. So what I did, I opened all the exams. We have like eight types of exams in a year to foreigners. And sometimes, in some exams, even in Japanese language, and Japanese dissertation, you find the foreigners on the top. And then, so it was, uh, for me, very easy uh, to reach the third percent I want without going through a lot of complicated things. Because they would say, oh no, you are taking foreigners who are bad, who are this, whatever. But like if you, they are the, the, I mean, these people are really best, are, are really like I'm on top of a lot of things. So that's something also uh, which helped me. So there is another thing, clarify uh, that female and foreign researchers, if they become at the uh, end, the same point as Japanese, I'm sorry for Japanese, but uh, Japanese researchers, we consider taking uh, foreigners or female. We give advantage to, to female. Uh, yes, now this is giving my people a little problem. Especially Japanese interview, maybe you know. They, you come to job interview, they interview without ta telling you how much you gain, how much is your salary. And then they are now shocked because we are now going through a lot of interviews that foreign I mean, uh, researchers ask them, I mean, can you tell me the conditions? They say, oh, that's not true, Japanese. You know, you are changing the rules. Now we are having people who don't read the air. <laughs> so, that's a problem. But um, I think it's very important um, to give them this occasion to change too, because they need this diversity. And then I think like that's something I really can do um, as president uh, of university. And also, um, I just make sure that they put exactly what we are eating. I mean, because we have like faculty of uh, manga, all those things, so they can draw. Because that happened to me. Maybe like, I mean, uh, if you live in Japan, you might have that problem that they have uh, different names for the same thing. So I don't eat pork. I know, I know that pork was buta. <coughs> oh, you, you are swinging this, okay, anyway. <laughs> but there is another name. So always my colleague were taking me to tonkatsu which is also poor, but I didn't know that that was poor. I was, I was enjoying that, anyway. <laughs> and at night, they say, okay, let's go to ramen. And then that ramen soup is also poor, which, is, which has different name. They have a meat on that, which is chashu. It's a different name too. How can I know? So I was like eating these things for like six months, and after that, one day they were like, I mean, uh, ordering like some momento. They told me, okay, what do you want? I say, I don't want pork. They said, hmm? I said, yes. I'm Muslim, I don't eat pork. They said, eh, you never ate pork. I said, never. 
<laughs> if you eat, what happened to you? I said, no, not what happened, but that's the rule. I, I don't eat pork. You see, so that's what happened to a lot of people here. So I tried to make like uh, the pictographs, like the pictures, you know, to explain to people that we have vegetarians, we have vegan, we have a little type of people. So that's also to, you know, to reach the diversity, you need also this kind of like communication skill and communication style. And then also, uh, we try to have also the old gender restrooms also. So, and then uh, to continue also um, to change the mind. And then also I create this space for foreign students to tell them you are not um, a guest, you are not like tourists. You are part of this university and then uh, you have to also think about what you can do. Then they start to make food. <laughs> I don't know why. But okay, but anyway, like I mean, they're creating a lot of uh, um, occasions to interact with Japanese people, and even like they go through some subjects which are really taboo for Japanese people, but they, they, they discuss about that. And then one thing which is interesting is like they were even on NHK, um, these people, to talk about these kind of things. So finally, um, I am coming to the conclusion. So what I felt um, as um, the cultural gap uh, in Japan as I say, like um, in living in Japan uh, as an African. That was very interesting. So when I came to Japan, Chinese people, they were touching me easy. But when I came to Japan, they were not touching me, but they were asking me. So when I, was, I told them I come from Mali, West Africa, oh, we are very happy to meet you. Oh, why? We love animals. Oh, what kind of animals are doing <laughs> It doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> but it makes a lot of sense to them to meet some people who are living with animals, maybe. <laughs> or like, I don't know, who are part of them. So, I mean, I was always in these kind of things, like, you know. Or like, the second question, what is your blood type? <laughs> they always, like, I mean, this is very, I mean, they always try to, you know, like, a, make a position to define you age, black type, or then uh, Uma, or whatever. Like, so that was like my first talk when I came to Japan. For the Muslim thing, I explained to you, okay. <laughs> and also, uh, when you set up organization, it's really difficult uh, in Japan because the rules are not clear. It's according to the face. Sometimes, you know, you miss something, one week later, you come, they say, no, no, there is this one and this one and that one. You know, like, they always, like, come out with new rules. Why don't you give me integrated, you know, like, all the rules that I can understand what to do? And also, maybe that happened to a lot of foreigners here. If you have a position. So one day, a Japanese uh, mother came to my school and said they are looking for the dean. I was dean of faculty that time. And then when I came out, she said, no, I'm looking for the Japanese dean. <laughs> I said, yeah, but I mean, you know, in schools you have only one dean. I don't know what you have to create. <laughs> so we have always that, like, I mean, you go somewhere to represent Japan, or like I go, I, I travel a lot with my staff. They jump me, they want to, you know, greet my staff first. <laughs> but it's okay. But I mean, this is not only the problem of Japan. It's a problem also of outside, which understand Japan also as a kind of homogeneous, uh, I mean, society. But Japan is changing a lot. Japan is also trying to integrate, but even outside, they don't really like accept that yet. That Japan is also a country which is willing to change. So what is also uh, very interesting too, and then also I think we are going through. So as a conclusion, expected role of foreign intellectuals in Japan as cultural facilitator or maybe economical bridge. So that's like what we can do. We can be cultural facilitators. We can, you know, like, I mean, um, try to tell them, you know, how the negotiations can be. So how we can have also um, new ways of like approaching things. So this is like, I mean, um, the role I'm trying to play um, in Japanese institution. And I think um, my talk today, I don't know if it was <laughs> rich or like uh, what we're expecting, but I mean, this is also something um, we should think about it, even as language teacher, because this is also something which is uh, integrated in the culture also. So, 
Thank you very much for your time. And I hope in the discussion later, we can have some questions. Thank you very much.